good morning dear friends and welcome back after a break of one day i hope yesterday being the lord's day you all have had a wonderful time worshiping him and praising him as we begin this day let us begin by meditating on god's word at the feet of jesus and remember the holy spirit is the best teacher of god's word and so always look to the holy spirit and invite him and use it with him and learn today's meditation is uh, taken from the book of deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 11 and in this passage this is what we read like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions the lord alone led him no foreign god was with him this is the life of moses one can learn many lessons from the life of an eagle one of these lessons is how an eagle learn to fly the eagle chooses a ledge of rock and builds its nest and lays two eggs when the young birds are old enough to fly the parent eagle come and stirs up the nest step by step and then pushing it off the nest and ledge the young eagles are enticed to jump from the ledge and to try and fly and uh, if the small eagle is in danger of falling down and on the rock the parent eagle will swoop down and goes underneath it and uh, hold and catches it on its wing and thus again fly high and let it go and this is the way an eagle learns to fly and it is very very important that the mother eagle or the father eagle does it to the young uh, young eagles because if they are allowed to remain in the nest as years goes by the eagle will become useless helpless getting fat day by day by only eating and not flying and never learn to fly and take to the skies and to take care of its own life now when moses was looking back to his own life he likens god to an eagle because this has been his experience there are three major stages in his life the first happened when he was 3 months old you remember when he was born the order by a decree of pharaoh the midwives were supposed to kill every male child born to a hebrew parent but when moses was born his mother looked at him and he was extraordinarily beautiful and so she hid the child for 3 months and of course after 3 months you can imagine uh, no longer a child could be hidden he begins to make too much noise and everybody will come to know there is a boy growing up there and then his life will be in danger so the mother the from being from a levite uh, family uh devised a plan because she suddenly remembered noah and she thought noah's god is her god too and so just like noah made a boat to save themselves from the floods that was coming 
Ichabod, that uh, no, not Ichabod, um, Moses' mother uh, built a small boat and put the baby Moses inside it and covered it up and took that basket into the Nile and pushed it for the, so that the Nile River will take this child wherever God will direct. And who was there? The daughter of Pharaoh along with her maids were there in the morning for having her cleaning up. And so she saw the basket and sent her maids to pick it up and brought <clears throat> and uh, when it opened what she saw really delighted her as well as, as well as surprised her. And she took this child as her own son and brought Moses up. And the Moses name was given, the name Moses was given to that child by uh, Pharaoh's daughter. And so here it is. The first 40 years Moses grew up in the palace of Pharaoh. Here is a marvelous, miraculous provision that God was preparing for the deliverance of his people Israel from the slavery of Egypt. While Pharaoh was trying to kill all the male child, you know, why only male child? Why no, no girl child? Because remember, a male child grow up to be soldiers. And not only that, the Israelites were growing in number and they were becoming mightier than the Egyptians. This is what Pharaoh saw. And he was afraid. And so he made this decree. No more male child in the home, in the family, in the homes of Israelites. That's what happening. The male child will grow up to be soldiers. And down the line, what will happen? Only girl children will grow up in Israel. And no one to marry them. No Israelites will be out. Population will go down. And slowly they will be dead. But at the same time, look here, what is happening is, God was bringing up a deliverer. And who was looking after this deliverer without him knowing it? The Pharaoh himself. He was living and growing up in Pharaoh's palace, getting the best of Egypt. Palace and education and everything luxurious and abundant for Moses. And then looking back, this is what Moses saw. The first 40 years. And that was a stirring up of nest for Moses to come out of his comfort zone and get into the outside world. And where he spent his first 40 years. And the second stirring up happened when he was 40 years old. He went out, see, growing up in the lap of his own mother by God's provision. You know, that mother will whisper into his ears every day about the God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Joseph. And I mean Jacob. And here is this child growing up with the knowledge of who he was and whom he belonged to. And so at the age of 40, he went out to the palace and uh, he was visiting the camp of Israelites to see how his people were doing. And he was presenting himself as the next deliverer for them. And so in the process, he killed an Egyptian. And very soon it came, he came to know that people saw it and now it is known his life was in danger. He left Egypt, ran away for his life, arrived at Midian. And so here is another stirring up of nest. Get out of Egypt from the luxuries, from the abundance and from the honor and from that position. And he was in fact the crown prince. There was a crown and throne waiting for him. And God stirs him up and he has to leave all that and run away for his life. 
what was god doing that is another step second step of his tearing up like the eagle is learning to fly by himself and the, so the third 40 years that, that was another phase of life he arrived in median ended up in a family of the priest of uh, midianite and um, he became the shepherd of uh, uh, his father-in-law and he also got uh, got one of his daughters to get him married and so you know the story the third time he was stirred up and there he grew spent another 40 years and that was the time when moses thought he was ready to be the deliverer god told him i am not ready for you and so he spent 40 years in the wilderness remember god does it all with love he was a greater he has a greater purpose in moses life god's stirring our nest means he is calling us for acts of faith a greater fulfillment shall be found and one illustration is remember peter stepping out of the uh, storm stuck uh, uh, boat uh, into the storm stuck stuck uh, river See it was night and dark and Jesus sitting on a hillside saw how his disciples were struggling to row the in uh, the boat in the middle of the night and in the middle of the sea so he came to them towards them how walking on the same troubled waters as he approached the disciples were more frightened thinking it was a ghost and they cried out And then Jesus the first words he spoke to them was do not be afraid it is i you know my friends many times we are caught in certain storm and we are so scared and afraid our lives are in danger and our situation is too bad it is it is out of control of anyone and so we cry out and then comes god In the midst of that storm there is the voice of Jesus do not be afraid it is i you know sometimes god uses his storms to come near us so don't be scared of all the storms it could be jesus wanting your attention and drawing nearer to you through the storm where you can experience the miraculous then the rest of the story you know by jumping in a, when he when he when when he said it is i peter suddenly said lord you know i like the response of peter you know what was the response he did not to pray lord if it is you please command the storm and the wind and the waves to cease and stop them lord let there be peace let all this howling wind be ceased and you if it is you you have the power to do it and uh, get us out of it that was not his prayer i like his prayer he said he prayed lord if it is you then allow me to come to you how walking just like you are walking over the storm struck waters and jesus immediately gave the command come that's the only thing he said and he hear peter jumped into the water and he actually started walking besides jesus peter was the only human being who actually walked over the troubled waters or over the even calm waters you cannot walk and we make fun of peter for his failures and uh, uh, so many uh, things we say Uh, but you know you also must remember peter was the only disciple who had the courage of course he talks too fast but he also acted fast 
he jumped into the water and he walked and he was close to Jesus till then he took his steps you know how he was able to walk as long as his eyes were on the face of Jesus he was walking on his word another occasion Jesus said you know the disciples who were trying to catch some fish through the night they couldn't catch even one in the morning Jesus said you cast your net that side and Peter cried Lord the whole night we tried but we couldn't catch a single fish but at your word we will cast the net then you know what happened at the word of Jesus you must have the courage to do what Jesus Christ is asking you to do and I close here today and the rest we will meditate tomorrow but let me close by saying this these are the three stages of Peter's life 40 years each the first 40 years in the palace of Pharaoh growing up as the son of Pharaoh or is uh, 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 Pharaoh, the present at that time the Pharaoh's sister's son and the second 40 years in the wilderness right from the palace into the wilderness what a contrast who is managing his life God himself hallelujah when God sets his eyes on anyone even before the child was born even the child was uh, conceived by his mother God sets people apart that's what he told Jeremiah when the call of God came to Jeremiah he complained I am only a child you know I cannot do this work and God said Jeremiah I knew you before I created the world I know you even before your mother conceived you and then I knew you by your name before you were born and so I am the God who knows the beginning and the end he sees the end in the beginning itself this is our God and Moses was set apart by God to be the deliverer but Moses was little much in a little much in a hurry so at the age of 40 he thought he was the deliverer he will show to the people his people that they better accept me and etc etc but God said Moses Moses was telling I am ready and God was telling, you may be ready, but I am not ready for you. It took the next 40 years for Moses to be ready. And by the time in the eyes of God, when Moses was ready, what was Moses' response? I am sorry, Lord. I am not the person you are searching for. You may have found the wrong address. Please look somewhere else. But God knows what he is doing. You may be ready and jump into anything you think God's will. It may be God's will, but God's time hasn't come. So don't be disappointed and don't be in a hurry. Wait for God himself to give you the appointment letter and equip you with his anointing and fill you with wisdom and grace. God has a plan and purpose for your life. But be patient. Don't feel jealous of others. And don't try to jump over someone else. Wait. God's time come. You will be out. May the Lord bless you as you make yourselves available to the Holy Spirit to be used of Him. Lord, I thank you for people who have heard this message this morning. Perhaps there may be someone upon whom you have your eyes set and you have a plan and purpose for his or her life. 
But maybe someone is there, maybe in a hurry to do. But you know the perfect time and you will bring that person out. So while you are preparing, I pray that many of my listeners shall be ready when your call comes. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, God loves you. He has a great plan for you. Make yourselves available. I am ready, Lord. Let his call and anointing come upon you. Amen. This is a nice day, wonderful day, and have a great day ahead of you. Amen.